Fellas, today I finally beat Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64 for the first time, and, um, I have some thoughts. Let's talk about it. Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Botox Media. Today, I'm going to be doing my review, I guess, review discussion for Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64. Obviously, this is a throwback review. This game's over 20 years old now, uh, which is crazy. I've never beaten this game. I never really played it at all growing up. So before I talk about Paper Mario N64 by itself, uh, let me kind of give you the, the Botox Media Paper Mario history, right? Um, growing up, I had Thousand Year Door and Super Paper Mario around the same time. Uh, I was like seven. No, I was, I was like, when did the Wii come out? 2006? I was six when the Wii came out. Uh, we had both consoles independently, even though the Wii was backwards compatible. So I was playing both games at the same time. Uh, for the most part with Thousand Year Door, I watched my older brother play it. However, eventually I would start playing it on my own. And then Super Paper Mario, I loved quite a bit. Uh, at that point, I would, I would have definitely said that SPM was my favorite one, uh, which I already know is like controversial. People love Thousand Year Door, whatever. Um, I never beat either of them though, and I still haven't, so I'm really excited to go actually do that. When I was a kid, I don't know what I don't remember how far I got in either. I definitely played more of Super Paper Mario than than Thousand Year Door, but um yeah, I I, I loved both those games as a kid, I just never actually beat them. Uh, and then I was uh, twelve when Sticker Star came out and I beat Sticker Star twice. I actually really liked Sticker Star when it came out. Obviously I, I know uh, I know, I know, I know of its issues. I know of its hate. Um, I am excited to replay it. Uh, initially, what I was going to do was I was going to just replay that and do a video talking about it because I clearly had a different experience than everybody else. But I don't really know why because I grew up with Thousand Year Door and it's always it's the Thousand Year Door people versus the other Paper Mario people, right? I played both. Maybe I was just too young to truly appreciate what Thousand Year Door was at the time. Maybe that was it. Um, but regardless of that, I enjoyed Sticker Star when it came out. It definitely lacks. I mean, I, even then, I knew it was kind of lacking in terms of like writing and all that. But specifically, the gameplay, I actually remember enjoying a decent amount. Um, and then, of course, we had Color Splash, which I played probably a good 10, 15 hours of, never finished. Um, the writing in that game is fantastic. And then Origami King, I barely even touched. So with that said, growing up, I pretty much liked what I played of every single Paper Mario game, but Paper Mario 64 was the only one that I had never even touched. I might have played it at some point on Wii U Virtual Console for like an hour or something, but not enough to really make an impression. However, <laughs> I have to say, I'm just going to keep it real with you guys. Growing up on Twitter in my teenage years, I have definitely developed the um, kind of viewpoint that Thousand Year Door fans are freaking annoying. <laughs> because... It's, it's so, it's so bad. It's so annoying seeing people not defend Thousand Year Door, but trash on everything that came after. Sticker Star, I'm excited to replay because honestly, I'll probably understand that one. I'll, I'll probably have a new perception of that game when I play it. I'll probably be like, okay, I get it now. Uh, now that I'm not a kid playing the game, now that I played through the first two fully and actually you know, rolled credits on them. Uh, but even, like, people people that love Thousand Year Door, they trash on Super Paper Mario. They trash on Color Splash, especially, which I do not get. Color Splash is, has, it has the best writing. It has the best writing. Um, and even, like, the whole debate of, um, well, here, well here's, the, here's the thing that I don't get. People hate Color Splash because they haven't played Color Splash and they listen to a certain blue YouTuber. That, that's, what, that's what that is. Because everybody, for the most part, really liked Origami King. And I'm going to tell you something. I played about two hours of Origami King. <laughs> the gameplay sucks. That is the least fun, Paper Mario. So, um... It's a little, it's just annoying. Thousand Year Door fans are so annoying. However, Thousand Year Door is a great game. And I'm excited to actually fully finish it this year when I when I get to that. Because I'm just going to play through them all in order. But, with that said, with my, my perception of the Paper Mario franchise out laid out for you guys. With my history of each game kind of laid out. Let's talk about my experience with Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64. So, uh, this got added to the Nintendo Switch Online a few months back. And I finally decided to, I don't know what it was. I just it was just kind of itching, like you know. There's there's so many like iconic, classic, first party Nintendo games that I have not even played all the way through. Um, I haven't. I, I just a Zelda Tears. I haven't beaten Twilight Princess. That's a pretty big one. Uh, Earthbound. I've never beaten. Um, uh, well, our Earthbound obviously goes the entire series. Uh, F Zero. I haven't really played that much. Um, so. Or Metroid Prime 2, I haven't I haven't played the Prime games. I love 2D Metroid, but every time I played Metroid Prime, I was kind of like, eh, you know, not really for me, but I would love to give those another shot. Uh, Bayonetta, I know it's not Nintendo, but 
You get what I'm saying? There's a lot of like iconic Nintendo series that I have not really played. Paper Mario N64 was one of those games that I really just wanted to sit down and finally play. So I was kind of feeling it. So I just I booted it up, not really expecting to fully play through it. And then uh, 25 hours later or so, um, what a damn good game! And I have to say, uh, not to not to throw some hyperbole in here, <laughs> the the Nintendo 64 library isn't great. It has really good games. It has genre defining games. Most of those games have been outdone. Um, you know, I love me some Ocarina. I love me some Majora's Mask. Obviously, Mario 64 is my favorite Mario game. Um, outside of that, there's really not that much, like, true quality. Paper Mario has not really aged. You know? I don't have really any issues with it, to be completely honest with you. This is easily, already, one of my favorite Nintendo 64 games. Because it doesn't even feel like a Nintendo 64 game. You could... Throw this on Switch, make it HD, and it would be completely fine. It reminds me of Wind Waker when that came to Wii U. Like, dude, this game is timeless. Um, the writing holds up. The gameplay holds up. There's literally... The, the, even the graphics hold up for a Nintendo 64 game. Literally, the only issue... And this is, this is going to sound really stupid. The only issue I have with this game is the text. The font. Because it looks bad. It looks crunchy. It looks crusty compared to everything else. Everything else looks completely fine in this game. Um, but, uh, I'll say this. So, um, I like RPGs. For sure. I like turn-based combat. However, it, it's hard for me to really get into it sometimes. Um, because it's just a commitment, you know? And it's usually a slower-paced game. Paper Mario, it, towards like the latter half and certain, certain chapters, I was getting a little tired of doing the combat in some areas. But they make it pretty easy just to avoid an enemy if you want to. Which I started doing to, a, to an extent. Um, but, I can say this. The, the combat's better than Origami King. <laughs> um... Because uh, you have all these partners, and at first, you know, I was, you know, I kind of just invested in, you know, uh, Cooper and Pear Carry, and then um, uh, uh, I forget what the other, who the other third guy that I was really invested in was. But then I realized, like, oh snap, everyone really matters. So I, I upgraded Watt. I upgraded um, uh, Lackalester, who is, bro. Imagine, imagine your name literally being Lackalester. That's kind of cringe, kind of cringe. <laughs> um, but just having all these partners adds a variety to the the gameplay that um at least throughout the majority of my playthrough it never got old i can imagine replaying this game though and not really liking it that much um like not the combat specifically getting repetitive i should say not not liking it's too harsh i could see it getting repetitive but the game ended just soon enough to the point where it was perfect um i think right now as the game is there's a perfect amount of variety in the gameplay and the partners and the moves you can do um, plus the badge system is freaking awesome. Why does, bro, come on. Every Paper Mario game should have the badges, <laughs> without a doubt. Um, the badge system's awesome. Uh, I, I do wish there, I know, um, I remember from Thousand Year Door, vaguely, that basically they'll have, like, the same badges, but they just cost way more to equip. This, in this game, you can kind of be broken. You can kind of just do whatever you want, uh, with the progression system of leveling up every 100 star points. I invested, I, I invested heavily into uh, the badge points early on, and then, dude, I was broken. It was awesome. It felt so good. Um, so, the badge system's awesome. The partners are awesome. Uh, I guess, talking about the partners again, though, real quick. Um, even just, like, the writing, man, is, is really good. I do really... I, I still stand by Color Splash, and even Origami King's writing is still good. Not, the gameplay, not as much. Uh, Color Splash's writing, though, specifically, is very good. It is top-notch Nintendo Treehouse localization. Like, it's amazing. The writing in this game is damn good also, <laughs> uh, for sure, with the characterization of all of the partner characters. And even just, like, the non-partner characters. I'm trying to think of specific examples. They're kind of blanking on me because it has been a few days since I beat the game, and I, I bench it all. I, it was a flurry uh, rush. But even, like, Mouse to Fung and all that, like, they're iconic characters in this game. And, I don't know, man. It feels good. It feels good to have a Mario game with not... They're not new characters. They are still just... You're, you're cheap, cheap with the little mohawk. You're, you're Goomba with the hat. You know, they are still pretty basic, but, bro, it's nice. It, it is nice, you know. It is nice seeing that little bit of variety. I look at Origami King, and I, I look at bob -omb and I'm just like, bro, why, why? Just give him a name. Just give him a name. There's no reason for the modern Paper Mario games to not do that, right? There's literally no reason. Um, and it is funny, because, like... <laughs> Obviously, that that's that really is the crux of people's issue with modern Paper Mario is that it lacks the identity, it lacks the characters, and it's it's it 
it boils down to literally just be, have a Goomba with the hat, bro. That's all I need. And have him have a different name. That is it. Other than that, you're perfect. Or even just all the different toads. Like, yeah, they all look uh, essentially the same, but they have like a little, you know, a little bit of like strand of hair or something. Um, it is very minor differences, but it, it does make each chapter and each loca location you go to feel unique. Um, I like the, um, I forget what it's called, like the Ice Temple uh, chapter. You go to like a little snow town and all the toads have earmuffs. That's really good. Um, stuff like that, man. Really good in this game. And point that I was going to make, the partners. Uh, I'm trying to think, who's, who's my favorite partner? Uh, I like Watt a lot. <laughs> Watt's a lot of fun. Me and my, gr my girlfriend was watching me play. We kind of made this headcanon in our minds that he actually... Is like an adult <laughs> and has like a super deep voice. Yeah, that's hilarious. He's a little banky. Um, uh, Paracarry's cool. Cooper obviously is kind of, you know, at least from my experience as a casual Paper Mario player, I guess at this point in time, kind of OP. Um, then you get like Lackluster with his raid attack and all that. So the partners are really good. I like all the partners except for Bo. You know, maybe maybe I'm uh, a little hostile because she tried to steal my name. Uh, this game came out after I was born, so maybe I'm a little, uh, you know, hostile because of that. But Bo, I never really got. Uh, I never. She's probably my least used, to be honest. Her and Goombario. Um, Goombario, I used quite a bit at the early game, obviously. But once I got Cooper and Paracarry, dude, it was like, eh, what's what's the point? Um, so yeah, the partners in this game are fantastic. It definitely makes me excited because honestly, I don't know. I don't really know what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting this many partners though. Uh, I think there's about eight in the game. No, no, there's like, yeah, there's probably about eight, right? Because you get like three in the first chapter, and then it kind of slows down to one per chapter after that. Um, in the last two chapters, you don't get a single partner. Um, it makes me excited to play Thousand Year Door, though, and see how many partners there are I don't even know about. Because there are definitely partners I don't remember seeing in that game. Or It's been, you know, 15 years since I've even touched Thousand Year Door. Um, so, I takeaway of the video, I am very excited to become one of those annoying Thousand Year Door fans. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. Um, I, I, I respect the hell out of Color Splash's writing and even like the gameplay. I, I enjoyed the gameplay of Sigur Star and Color Splash. Not Origami King. But it does make me question what the hell went wrong. <laughs> obviously, we know what went wrong. Sigur Star is the best selling game in the series. So obviously, they're not going to go back to it. But um, yeah, man. Paper Mario 64. Just the amount of... Uh, not, not even... I don't know, man. Just the, the amount of characters, the amount of locations, the length of the game feels perfect. It's, it took me like 20 three hours i think to beat um i used some restore points here and there to make a little thing some things like the the base force a little bit more tolerable that was fine um even that point in the game like i was thinking uh the part where you go to the flower garden i forget what it's actually called uh and you have to do like the little flower fetch quest that was easily the worst chapter by the way uh it was literally just a fetch quest going back and forth left and right i did not like that chapter easily the worst one uh, I, I shouldn't say i didn't like it either I, I still enjoyed it it was a nice little area but Felt a little off pace with the other ones. Um, getting the four magical seeds or whatever to grow that doorway. Uh, I forget what the like, little bulb, bulb boys are. The little bulb uh, guys that you get the four seeds from, from in, in different areas of the game. Um, that is absolutely something I would have like given up on as a kid. I would have missed one of those and then been like, nope, I'm done. Because I was, you know, I, I had internet when I was like seven, I guess, but not to the point where I was going on Game Facts and really just looking up. All right, how do I get the the chapter six in Paper Mario? You know, um, I was, I, 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 I thought it was funny because I was playing. And I was like, man, if I was playing this as a kid, I would have gotten lost because I would have missed one. I actually did miss one. I had to go back to the um, little desert area where you get pair carry. And uh, yeah, if I was a kid, I definitely would have missed that and then just given up. Um, so I, it makes me very curious for Thousand Year Door, not to keep bringing it up. What point was that for me in that game? Because I don't remember having trouble with like the actual gameplay or the combat or getting stuck on that. I just remember stop. I just don't. I, never, I, remember, I remember I just stopped playing it at some point. So I'm really curious to see if I can remember and pinpoint when exactly that was. Uh, but there, there you guys have it. Paper Mario 64. Maybe not the most in depth review, uh, but really more of a review of the series and just kind of where, where I'm at with it right now. Um, I love this game. Easily a top, top five in 64 game for me now. Probably top three, maybe. Um, honestly, uh, Banjo-Kazooie has a bit of a, you know, has a, has a run for its money now. Let's put it that way. Cause obviously the other two are Mario 64 and Majora. Um, yeah, Paper Mario 64, man, an absolutely fantastic game. If you have not played it, even if you don't like RPGs or turn-based combat, I still highly implore you to give it a shot because man, uh, if you have the Switch Online, it's right there. You can just go play it. Fantastic. I did a video talking about Switch Online, uh, the other day. Go check out that. Good value. Great game. I am going to pace myself a little bit. I'm going to play Thousand Year Door here in a few weeks, probably. Maybe after I'm done with Xenoblade. So, like, a couple months, actually. 
Um, but I, I want to pace myself so I don't get burnt out. But I do, I am very excited to see <laughs> where this journey takes me in terms of my opinion on the entirety of the Paper Mario series. Because uh, up to this point, you know, like I said, Sticker Star was the only one I actually properly beat. And I liked it. To be honest as a kid and then color splash i actually quite, a, quite enjoyed quite a bit so i'm um, excited to see where this all goes let me know what you think in the comments down below are you are you like me are you are you a sticker star kid i know i have a lot of 3ds people in my in my channel um <laughs> so yeah I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys think down in the comments below i'm excited to be on this paper mario journey of course so subscribe to the channel for whenever i do that thousand year door video and then moving forward I, I plan on playing all of them maybe not this year but over the next like year and a half or so um so there you guys have it thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed please subscribe hit that bell like, hit that like button, of course. Follow me on Twitter, at Botox Media. You can join the Discord, link to that is down in the description. And until next time, guys, bye-bye.